guys, my name is Judy, if you aren't a subscriber of my channel. It's been a while since I've made a video. It's been more than two years. I don't even remember the last time I made a video. But I created this channel with the intention of sharing my thoughts, ideas, my creations, all of that stuff with the world. And today I want to come back and release my testimony, my story of how I got to God and religiously where I come from because I actually wasn't born or raised Christian. So I guess I'll go ahead and start. I don't know how these videos go. Um, but yeah, going back to childhood, like I said before, I wasn't raised Christian. My mom was Christian, but because she worked so much, she wasn't able to have much of an influence on my thoughts and religious beliefs. My dad, on the other hand, subscribed to and still subscribes to a new age ideology. That's what, that's what I'll call it. A new age ideology mixed with like spiritual, I guess, studying like spiritual stuff. And he raised me in that and I later on believed in that. Um, essentially what we believed was there are multiple ways to get to God. And also we used to get to God and we studied like these like spiritual principles like give and take and we believe we believed in subjective truth. So essentially you could follow any path and believe that some way, somehow you would eventually end up at God. Yeah. And we believed in the validity of Christianity, but we believed that Christians were deficient in the truth. Why we're here, what's the meaning of life. We recognize Jesus as an important, significant spiritual teacher, but there was more. And Christians weren't aware of that, they weren't utilizing that, and that aspect of the truth, why we're here, that could be found in other religions. And just going back to that mindset and kind of like sharing what I thought of Christians, to me, back then, I thought Christians were stupid. Well, let me not say that. I thought Christians were dumb and sheltered and ignorant. Yeah, I just, I thought Christians hadn't experienced everything that the world had to offer. And to deny all of them thousands of belief systems out there, I thought that was naive. But if you leave with this video with anything, I want you to at least know that that could not be further from the truth. Yes, there are sheltered people in all religious, I guess, schools of thought, but there are ex-Satanists that are Christian, there are ex-witches, there are people from all walks of life. So it's not that Christians are, I mean, there are ignorant Christians or ignorant people in all groups, like I said, but it's not that Christianity is ignorant to all of the many things. And it's not that these things don't make you feel something or might bring about some kind of result because after all these thousands and thousands millions of people wouldn't believe 
in these schools of thought if they didn't feel anything, if something didn't happen. For example, law of attraction. I, as a Christian, am saying, yes, law of attraction can give you things. Yes, all of these things can bring about some kind of result. My thing is, you don't know what's behind that. You need to investigate whether that's from God. If you give any validity to the Bible at all, this might have some relevance to you. But in the Bible, when Jesus was in the desert for 40 days, Satan came to him and they were standing on a cliff looking at, I guess, the city, the world. And Satan told Jesus, I will give you everything that you can see, everything this world has to offer if you bow down and follow me and praise me or something like that. Satan told Jesus, the Jesus, that. So that should tell you that God isn't the only entity that's able to give you things. So seeing, seeing is not always believing. That's what I want you to get from this. Seeing is not always believing and you have to investigate more to validate your beliefs because even Satan can give you things. Yeah, so that's what I want you to take away from this video. But going back to my story, grew up New Age, was raised in New Age before it was even called New Age, really. Um, but yeah, I believed in New Age. And um, in hindsight, now that I know better, our ideology and some of the things that we would do opened a lot of doors spiritually. And I can actually remember the exact moment that those doors were opened the exact moment even as i was doing it i felt like hmm, this is a little weird yes i believe in this but this doesn't feel right i can remember the exact moment but um yeah doors were opened spiritually because these doors were opened, I had a very paranormal childhood. Doors would open literally before my eyes. Doors would close before my eyes. At my dad's house, my bedroom was on a floor where no one else was. There was a bunch of empty bedrooms on that floor. And at night, I would hear the doors of those empty bedrooms rattling, rattling, rattling all night. The TV would turn off by itself all of the time. There were even points in time when my dad and I would be downstairs um, at a different house. Uh, we had moved then, but my dad and I would be downstairs and we would literally hear footsteps running upstairs, jumping. The presence of these entities were very dominant. Dominant in the sense that they had a right to be here. They weren't, it was so, it was so dominant that they didn't even care that we heard them. They weren't trying to hide. They made sure we knew that they had a right to be there. It was so loud, it was like, it was louder than what a human, what a human's footsteps could produce. Even my dad, more than 200 pounds, him running upstairs could never produce that kind of, that kind of loudness. I had sleep paralysis almost every night. It got so bad to the point that I wouldn't even sleep at night. I would just wait until it would get light outside and then I'd go to sleep. And even then I wouldn't really sleep long. It was very restless. Yeah, sleep paralysis every night. I had dreams all of the time. Dreams in combination with sleep paralysis. But um, on one particular night, I was at my mom's house and I was home alone. My mom had to go to work. 
and I had sleep paralysis again, but this time it was one of the worst I had ever had. Not only did I have sleep paralysis, but whatever entity that was giving me sleep paralysis, that entity tried to push me out of my body. And immediately when it started happening, I realized what was going on and I started fighting back. And it wasn't like hands pushing me. I would describe it like the force you feel when you put two magnets of opposite poles Oh, not opposite poles of um, the same pole if you put two magnets with the same poles next to each other and you try to push them together that repulsive force is what it felt like it felt like like the entity was a magnet and i was a magnet and so the entity is pushing and i'm pushing back the entity's pushing i'm pushing back the entity's pushing i'm pushing back and then i remember what the new age ideology that I believed in taught me to do when I'm in a situation like this, when I'm in some kind of trouble, danger, spiritual attack, whatever. It taught me to call on this name. So I call on this name. Right now we're at 50-50. In addition, as this like fight is going on, my vision out of my eyes is correlated to the fight pretty much so i'm pushing and well right now we're at 50 50 right so i have 50 50 of my vision and as i push back i get more as the entity's pushing back it's decreasing so i call on this name we're at 50 50 and the second I call on this name that the New Age ideology taught me to call on, my 50-50 vision decreases to where I barely have any vision out of my eyes. This is how much I have. And so I'm like, yo, what the heck? This ideology that I believe in, that makes so much sense, I called on this name and it's not working. Not only is it not working, but it's about to cost me my life. And then for some reason, to this day, it makes no sense because I had no kind of regard for Jesus. Yes, I, I thought he was a spiritual teacher, but he wasn't the main guy to me. This name was the main guy. So for some reason, I call on Jesus, I say his name, and instantly, whatever entity is pushing on me, trying to push me out of my body, is gone. Instantly, the sleep paralysis is gone, and I sit up. And I'm sitting there so shook. I was shook for a few days after that. Because the premise of the New Age ideology was that Jesus was not the main guy. That's what the ideology taught. Jesus wasn't enough. But in real life, with this experience that I had, the name that the ideology said was the main guy almost cost me my life. And Jesus, this person we just threw to the side, said he was, you know, he did amazing stuff, but, you know, it, it was deficient. Jesus made this entity immediately go away. I was shook because my whole paradigm, everything that I thought was true, was torn down by this single moment. And I'll be honest, at this point, I did not, it sounds crazy, I didn't become Christian 
at this point in time but it at least made me put some respect on Jesus's name. It wasn't the respect that he deserved but I recognized Jesus as the highest spiritual teacher and I left the new age ideology. I was still confused because I felt like there was more than Christianity when it came to the truth. So I got on my knees and I prayed to God and I said, God, so confused. I don't know what is truth. Show me the truth. It doesn't matter if it's 180 degrees from what I know. Show me the truth and I will follow it. I just want the truth. I don't care about an allegiance to anything. I just want the truth. So um, I said this prayer and this all happened when I was maybe 13, 14 years old. I know it sounds crazy, but because I was in an environment filled with so many paranormal things and I had so many paranormal experiences, I started asking questions about life earlier on than I guess most people. And I started exploring religions earlier on. But even at this age, I was full as a 23 year old. I forgot how old it was. <laughs> I'm trying to forget because I'm so old. Well, I'm not old, but I am getting there. Um, so I'm, I say this as a 23 year old young woman that at 13, 14 years old, I was fully like aware of what was going on. Um, so yeah, I prayed this prayer and I start my journey of exploring more religions. I left this new age ideology, but I explored, it's funny, I left one new age ideology and explored more new age. So I'm learning about indigo children and auras and there was even a point in time in high school where I practiced yoga every single day, self-guided for a year and some change. Um, it didn't matter what time it was, it could be two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I practiced my yoga and I would use the word practice. I practiced my yoga every single day, minimum of one hour, no matter what time it was. I'm learning about Islam. I'm learning about energy, frequencies, astrology. I'm learning about all of that stuff. And that lasts um, for a while. And it wasn't until freshman year in college that things started to change. As I'm going through this exploration, I know that whatever I end up believing, it has to include Jesus because of this moment I had when I was 13, 14 years old. It wasn't until freshman year that some of the ideas that I had accepted, God used people in my life who weren't even Christian, which is the craziest thing, who weren't even Christian. God used these people in my life to slowly pick away at some of the things that I had accepted. And he used these people to unknowingly push me closer to him. And to Jesus. Anyway, so um, I'm talking with my roommate who's not Christian. I'm telling her that I believe in Jesus, but I also like crystals. And she literally looks me dead in my face and says, 
Judy, you can't do both. You can't be, you can't believe in Jesus and also do crystals. Just like, what? Why are you saying that I have to choose? In New Age premises, you can just believe whatever makes you, whatever you choose to believe in. And I'm choosing to believe in Jesus and crystals. Why are you saying that I can't? She doesn't say anything more. She just says, you can't do both. And so I'm looking at the crystal that I have sideways. And I'm trying to figure out what she means by this and why this is incompatible with Jesus. At this time, I hadn't read too much into the Bible. I just knew from my experience that Jesus, some way, somehow, had a part to play in truth. So I knew I was holding on to Jesus, which means, you know, something might got to be off with these crystals. So, you know, thinking about what my roommate said, saying that I have to choose because they're not compatible. I'm looking at this crystal sideways. And um, because I grew up in such a paranormal environment, it made me sensitive to, I guess, things like that. I wouldn't really say that it had ability per se, but it made me sensitive to that where I can feel things. So I pick up this crystal and I try to connect with it. I'm trying to connect with it and see like what's going on here. What is the energy behind this? What's going on? And so in me trying to connect with it, I feel the energy of the crystal putting off a vibe of, I don't know if you've seen Aquamarine, but in Aquamarine, um, the mermaid, she has these little sea stars. And these sea stars, they go in your ear and they just, they just say like all of these nice things. So I'm connecting with this crystal and I'm feeling that kind of, energy off of it but in that same instant that I felt that I also felt that it was pretending and that something else was behind this crystal instantly I dropped the crystal and from that day on I threw away crystals and I was like okay well crystals are out crystals aren't a part of truth I don't know the truth yet but I know crystals aren't a part of it and then I had another moment when I was dating this guy and at this time I was really into astrology. I do my birth chart and I'm not gonna lie, it had some things that were correct, but not all. I might make another video about things that might seem like they get some things right. But anyway, yeah, I do my birth chart and then one day when we're hanging out, I ask him, the time that he was born because I want to do his birth chart and he gets really weird about it he's not telling me directly that he doesn't want to do it but I'm feeling that he doesn't want to do it he is Muslim and at the time I believed that Muslims and Christians I, I mean I guess I wasn't fully Christian at the time but because I believed in Jesus I I guess sometimes said that I was Christian. Anyway, um, yeah, I believe that Muslims and Christians believed maybe not the same things, but at least believe in the same God. And so he is rejecting astrology, despite us really believing that we believe in the same God. And so I'm thinking, what does he know that I don't? We believe in the same God. What does he know? And so I cool off from astrology. Um, eventually me and this guy and things and um, I start focusing on my relationship with God and I start remembering 
that moment, which would have been six, almost seven years ago at this time, I started remembering that moment and having the desire to learn more about who Jesus was and what the Bible says about him. Around this time, my dad lets me know that he has this goal for me to read the Bible three times before I get married. And so I'm thinking like, okay, I'm in my 20s now. I obviously don't know when it's gonna happen, but I might as well get started on the first read. And to this day, my dad's not a Christian. That just goes to show how God can use people and those people have no idea. So I'm reading, I'm learning all this amazing stuff. I'm connecting it with science and physics and the Big Bang. I'm learning all of this amazing stuff. And then I start getting these dreams. I start getting these dreams of me being left behind on the last day. I'm getting these dreams and I'm like, God, what do you mean? What do you mean you're leaving me behind? Why do you keep showing me this? I'm reading the Bible. I know all of this stuff. I'm studying all the time. I'm researching. Why do you keep showing me that I'm getting left behind on the last day? And I had this these dreams like three or four times and I can't figure out what God is telling me. I can't figure it out, but I just continue to sow into my relationship with God and ask him why. So now it's fall semester of 2018. This is now seven years after that moment that I had at 13, 14 years old when Jesus saved my life and I'm learning more and I'm still getting these dreams. So like I said before, um, growing up in a paranormal environment, I developed this sensitivity. I can't see things, but because I was around it so much, I'm able to walk in a room and know that something is there. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily say that I was born with it really. I, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Or maybe, I don't know. But the most logical explanation I could give is just from repetition. I give an analogy. We all grow up looking at the sky every day. We can look at the sky, see the color of the clouds, and probably with an 80% accuracy, we can say what the weather is going to be like that day in some regions more than others but i digress that's the that's the way i would describe it when it comes to being able to sense that something is there just repetition being around it all the time and i will say i feel like everyone really has the ability to sense as someone that's seen a lot of things i'll say that if you having a great day, everything's going great that day, and then all of a sudden you walk in your house and you sense something, nine times out of 10, you're right. We all have the ability to sense. It's just that you might brush it off or we're not confident in that sense because we haven't sensed a lot of things before. But anyway, um, yeah, because of the way I grew up, I have the sensitivity, and it's fall semester of 2018, and I'm starting to, to sense that something is in the atmosphere in my apartment, something is off, and that there's a presence. I'm feeling it for a couple days, whatever, brush it off. I've been through so much that stuff like that doesn't even faze me. I don't even get scared of things like that um because i have jesus and then one day i walk in the apartment and i sense it very heavily i'm alone in the apartment none of my roommates are home i walk in and i'm just like you know what i had an anatomy test to study for and i was like i don't have time for this i need to know these bones for this test on the skeletal system i don't have time 
So I leave and I go to study on campus. Now at my university, a lot of the tests seem to be, I guess, synchronized across campus. Eight times, seven times out of 10, if you have a test, there are thousands of people that have a test as well. And because of that, all the study spaces are just full of people studying for their tests. But me, but I knew a place on campus that no one really knew about, had nice bathrooms, smelled nice, everything was great. So I decided to go there. And I go there and it's pretty empty as I expected. And I get all my stuff out, get settled in, lay all my snacks out, and I look up and there's this light that is flickering. It flickers like maybe four or five times. Flicker, 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 flicker. It flickers very eerily like the movies. I see that and I'm like, okay, no, I gotta go. I, at this time, was also watching videos of an ex-Satanist that turned Christian and in the videos he talks about like some of the things that go down on that side and just like you know what I need to be in the side of people yes it might be louder whatever whatever but I need to be in the side of people I need to know these bones I don't have time for anything to go down today so I walk to a library that's not too far from this hotel from our campus hotel and um, I went to a southern university and in the south we have these buds called cicadas and they make this pretty neutral um, buzzing sound in front of the library that I was walking to there's this wooded area so I'm walking by this wooded area that has cicadas in it so I'm hearing cicadas and then all of a sudden, the cicada's sound turns into the sound of a snake, a snake hissing. And it does it twice as I'm walking in. This thing, this is not, you know, okay, so this is supernatural. Something's going on. But you know what? I need to know these bones. Not even paranormal stuff is going to distract me from studying so the next day i'm also using this day as a study day but before i go to study i go to a grocery store that's not too far away to get some snacks so i go to the chip aisle and i'm looking at the chips trying to decide what i'm gonna get and out of the corner of my eye i see someone i see a man that looks like he's on the rougher side. And I grew up in the hood, so I'm actually able to say this with experience to back it up. But this man looks like he's on something. I'm looking from the corner of my eye and I see that he does a double take. And I look at him and he looks at me as if he recognizes me, but we've never met ever don't know this man at all he walks by my aisle and this aisle is kind of weird not only did it have entrances from the top and the bottom but it also had an entrance from the middle of the aisle and this man goes around and enters from the middle of the aisle and he looks at me and he's giving me the creepiest smile he's smiling at me and we're i'm staring him down because I'm on high alert, all the stuff that I experienced the other day, I'm on high alert, I know things are high end right now. We're staring each other down and he's walking behind me and he walks to the top of the aisle and we're having a stare down the whole time. Cause I'm like, I'm not scared of you. You ain't finna do nothing to me. Like I said before, I have a sensitivity to this type of stuff. I know what's going on. So I'm staring it down. People enter the aisle, see what's going on. They're looking back and forth like, yo, what's going on? He's giving me this creepy smile. They all are staring each other down like, what's going on? And we were just staring each other down. Still smiling at me. Sinister. The, so the smile was so sinister. 
I knew I knew what was up. And I'm like, you know what? I need to know these bones. I don't have time for this. Let me get my snacks and let me go. And I go to study. Everything's great. You know when you're so thrown off and on edge that you try to make yourself feel better by denying what you saw or denying the things that have happened that have made you on edge so a couple of days go by and i'm just like you know what i'm tripping i'm overthinking things this is all in my head i'm just tripping i'm just tripping and i'm holding on to that because it makes me feel better i mean i know deep down that i'm not tripping but i'm just telling myself that i'm tripping and then i get a call from my dad Mind you, this is all within the span of a week, jam-packed week, but whatever. I get a call from my dad and I wasn't there to answer his call, but he left me a voicemail. On the voicemail, he said, Judy, call me back. It's urgent. I was like, urgent? And this is not going on. He's never really left me a voicemail like that. So I call him back and I'm like, hey dad, like what's going on? And he tells me that my aunt called and wants to talk to me. Now I wasn't really raised around my extended family. So I love my aunt. I think she's cool. I think she's actually really cool. Um, but because I wasn't really raised around her and we don't really talk, often it was very peculiar for her to call my dad asking for me so i'm extra thrown off so i'm like okay dad i'll call her and see what's going on i call my aunt and you know she asked me how i'm doing whatever and then she asks me if i'm okay I'm like yeah i'm okay and then she tells me that her friend had called her and asked her if she knew someone named Judy. And at first she said no because she was mainly only thinking of the people that she sees every day, like her coworkers, just like immediate people around her. She says no. And then later on, she calls her back and she says, actually, yeah, I know someone named Judy. My niece, my niece that's miles away, her name's Judy. She's like, okay, um, yeah, something is telling me that we need to be praying seriously for Judy. We need to be praying for her safety. And when she told me that, I was like, great, all the stuff that's been happening, it's not in my head. Great, now I don't have that blissful ignorance. All the stuff that I was experiencing is actually happening. This stuff is real. So not only did I feel like spiritually that side of things was heightening like evil i guess manifestations were heightening but my relationship with god was also heightening it felt like everything was coming to a peak and um i watched some other testimonies and it seems like that tends to happen a lot but um anyway it seemed like everything was coming to a peak. I still don't know why I keep getting these dreams of me getting left behind. So I'm praying really seriously. Um, got this new information. I'm just like, okay, I need to figure out my relationship with God. I need to know what I'm doing wrong. What am I missing? Why do you keep giving me these dreams of me getting left behind? And then I have this realization that all of this time of me reading and researching and finding all of these connections, I wasn't making God the head of that process. I wasn't making Jesus 
the head of that process. I was trying to be in control of my salvation. I said all these standards for myself, okay, I have to read the Bible all these times, I need to make all of these connections, I need to connect this all back to science, I need to do all of these things. I hadn't submitted to Jesus. I hadn't submitted to God. So in that moment, I realize and I submit. And I feel in my heart at that moment, I was saved. And despite all of the crazy, evil things that was happening, I go to sleep knowing that I am being protected and nothing bad is going to happen to me. God is protecting me. And that same night, I had one of the worst sleep paralysis I've ever had. And this time, you know, as it was happening, I tried to say with my mouth, Jesus. And as soon as I got to the letter J, my mouth was paralyzed. And then I try to say Jesus in my mind. And as soon as I try to, as soon as I get to the letter J, my mind, the inner voice, the voice that you hear when you're thinking, that voice was paralyzed. And then I say, I, try, I say Jesus, I call out to Jesus with my heart, not with words not with a voice, but with my heart. I woke up and I know that Jesus heard my heart and saved me. And I knew that I had nothing to worry about. Sure, you know, I might have sleep paralysis here and there, but Jesus is going to protect me. And he has. Even since that moment when I was 13, 14 years old, every single time I have sleep paralysis, Every single time I have some kind of spiritual experience, evil spiritual experience, the moment I say Jesus, I'm saved. It goes away. The moment. There hasn't been one moment I've said Jesus and I've not been saved. Um, so yeah, after that day, I completely turn my life around not because I felt like I had to but because I wanted to I didn't want anything keeping me away from God I didn't want anything getting in the way of my relationship with God I was dating this guy at the time and though we were very very close I knew that our relationship was a hindrance to my relationship with God and so I broke up that relationship I cut out so many things out of my life so many things I fasted I didn't want anything getting in the way because I finally realized the truth and my soul wanted nothing more than my relationship with God so again if you leave with anything from this video, I want you to know that yes, you may feel something. Yes, you may receive things, for example, law of attraction. As a Christian, I'm telling you, yes, these things may bring about results, but seeing is not necessarily believing. Satan can give you things too. The Bible says Satan masquerades as an angel of light. The Bible says that Satan offered Jesus, the Jesus, everything that this world could offer. The Bible says that Satan is the prince of this world. Think about the actual church of Satan, right? There are churches, yes, but when you're talking prince of the world, prince of the world is a good majority 
of the population. If we were able to count the amount of practicing Satanists, whether it's literal or metaphorical um, Satanism, it is such a small percentage of our population. People that outright worship Satan. It's such a small, per there are seven going on eight billion people in this world. And in the Bible, it says that Satan is the prince. A small percentage of the population is not no prince to me. That's not a prince, okay? So that should tell you Satan is not only in the church of Satan, not only in what is outright worship of him. The Bible calls Satan a deceiver. The Bible calls Satan a liar. If it call if if you're a liar, that means that you're probably good at it. If you're a deceiver, that means that you've deceived people, okay? That is his name. What I want you to walk away from this video is that seeing is not always believing. Test what you believe. Satan has the ability to masquerade as, a, as, a, as an angel of light. He's able to do that. Test what you believe. That's all I have to say. I'm not here to judge anyone. I am the most imperfect person there is. To this day, I don't know why God saved me because I fail. I fail all of the time. I'm not perfect. I fail God sometimes. Even in me taking this long to film this testimony and release it to the world, I failed God and how long it took. I'm not one to judge. I'm not judging anyone. What I want in my heart is for everyone to know the truth. It's not out of judgment or me thinking that I'm better than anyone. <sighs> Test what you believe. That's all I ask. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Bye.